Welcome and thank you for joining us for Get the Complete Customer Picture in Marketo with Scribe. I'm Lynn Harrington, the Director of Marketo Enablement, and I'm joined here today by Brendan Peterson, a technical evangelist here with Scribe, who will be doing our demonstration today. Uh, before we get started, let's just go over a couple of housekeeping, housekeeping items. Uh, the first is that there's a series of icons at the bottom of your screen, which you uh, may want to utilize. Uh, the first one is the blue media player icon uh, that will allow you to adjust sound, pause, and forward the presentation. Uh, we will be monitoring this presentation through uh, chat, so feel free to participate through submitting questions or comments, and we certainly will answer them. If for some reason we do run out of time at the end of the presentation, uh, we'll be certain to follow back up with you via email. And then uh, there's also a resource folder, uh, which contains additional uh, information and resources that could help you in your evaluation. So with that, let's go through today's agenda. Uh, we're going to start by spending a couple of minutes talking about why Marketo customers would use a third-party tool such as Scribe for data integration. We're certainly aware that there's a native integration available from Marketo, uh, but there are some important drivers why customers um, have, have uh, elected to go with Scribe. Uh, then Brendan's going to take over and spend some time uh, showing you the Scribe online platform and the Marketo connector so you see how the product works and some of its capabilities. We'll uh, wrap back up with, again, some key benefits for Marketo customers and uh, then spend some time on Q&A and uh, give you some additional uh, links and resources uh, to continue your, continue your evaluation. So for those that are not familiar with Scribe, uh, we are a um, provider of migration and integration solutions. Um, have been around for a long time, and uh, and one of our markets has uh, a, f a focus has been the dynamic CRM market. So we are the um, leading application that is used for integration with dynamic CRM. As we've seen, uh, the emergence of marketing systems and the need to really integrate uh, all of the multi-channel marketing uh, solutions that are out there with customer data. Uh, that is located in CRM and ERP and other systems, uh, we've seen this become a real focus point for our business. So, why would a Marketo customer, when they can get native integration from Marketo, choose to work with uh, a product like Scribe? And uh, we find that these uh, customers, their needs really fall into four categories. Uh, the first is around unique or complex workflow. So it may be that your organization uh, doesn't use the standard leads object for leads. It actually uses a custom entity or it has some unique trait such as everything is treated as a contact. Um, as you may know, if you've used the native uh, integration or if you're evaluating it and have tried to look into this, it would be very difficult to get that to um, be able to support that type of scenario. It would certainly take custom code. With Scribe, you're going to see here today, that would be um, a configurable uh, adjustment that you could make to the integration. Um, highly customized data models. So this really means a, maybe a lot of custom objects with unique parent-child relationships, a lot of uh, custom fields. Again, it may just be that it's much easier in Scribe uh, to support those unique integration requirements that's going to be driven by that data model rather than try to um, work with the, the native integration. Customer data certainly lives in more than CRM systems. So as you think about your marketing programs and you think about how to best segment, target, and personalize your, your programs and campaigns, you may very well need information and data on these prospects and customers that's located in other data sources. It might be your internal ERP system. It might be a data quality or enrichment service that you're using that's outside of your organization. Scribe can, can uh, enable you to support all of the um, sharing of that data with Marketo as well. And then the fourth category is around technical requirements. You may still be using Dynamic CRM 4.0, or you may be an on-premise customer um, with a non-IFDA DFS deployment. So these types of technical requirements have led to, to customers selecting Scribe as well. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Brendan so that he can take us through the use cases and demo. All right. Thank you, Lynn. Um, so really, what the first couple of bullets here cover are some of the, the native um, integrations that we offer through our starter packs within uh, Marketo and CRM. 
So the first and really driving um, integration point there is leads and contacts. So we have new leads that are going to come into the Marketo system. This might be through web forms. This could be through just your natural um, addition of, of leads over time. Those leads are going to fill that top of the funnel. We are allowed um, within the API to do a lot of really dynamic kind of queries and filtering on there. Um, namely, we can filter lists. So you could have some process inside of Marketo saying once they reach this lead score, I want to put them into CRM because it's time for my sales team to now start interacting with them, um, do some more lead qual within there. So the native sync that we have allows that data to flow down and it can be smart about how it gets into CRM. Uh, it first looks and sees does this lead exist as a contact. Uh, we always treat kind of that, that contact as the more important um, entity versus a lead because if it's already a contact, you're probably interacting with them. So we go through and we do some intelligence there. If we don't find it as a contact, we go down to the next option of leads. Is it already there as a lead? So there is some, some intelligence to the integration where it doesn't want to propagate a lot of duplicates within CRM. It wants to keep that system as clean and as up-to-date as possible. Within that, like Lynn mentioned, if you don't use contacts and leads, you might be in the, the hotel industry and you've got guests. Um, you can, instead of, of using contact in your mind, use guest. We can kind of change that integration quickly and easily. Uh, it's really agile that you'll see in a few moments when I take you into the product. But you don't have to live within that, that account contact lead model. If you've changed CRM to fit your needs, uh, you can fit the integration to do that as well. Another really important piece of data we sync from Marketo is the marketing activities. So that that lead filled out a web form. Um, they had these interesting moments. They had these things occur to them inside of Marketo. We bring that down to CRM and store it in a custom entity that is hanging off the lead or contact. Um, or again, you can customize it to hang off of your, your custom you know, guest or campaign, prospect, whatever it might be in your system. What that means is that you can now build workflow dashboarding within CRM off of that activity data. So your sales team doesn't have to have exposure into Marketo in order to see some of that, that good nurturing data. Um, you can get it down to the CRM and actually make decisions around that. So if I see that Lynn filled out a form, looked at my pricing page and watched a video all within two days, I can build a workflow in CRM to track that, that succession of, of um, interaction with me and then trigger that to create a task for my sales team to go call that person. Um, you know, hot lead, cold lead, warm lead, I can use that data to help me figure out who are the individuals I want to talk to. With that, that fourth bullet point, um, opportunity syncing from CRM back into um, Marketo. That is going to allow me to have that closed loop reporting that is so crucial to these, these integrations um, scenarios. My marketing team needs to know the effectiveness of those campaigns. If they're spending 20 grand on print media and only five grand on webinars, but webinars are driving 90% of my closed, uh, closed one business, then I know I can stop investing in some of that print media because it's costing me more and it's gaining me less. So I can put that data into Marketo to, again, allow my marketing users to have that platform, that tool, those reports, instead of having to have them learn CRM, get around in there. Um, you know, you want to keep each team in the tool that they're most accustomed to. This last one, um, custom objects, so free trials, um, insurance policies. I want to get that from CRM into Marketo, and I want that to tie to an individual um, lead. I want that to allow me to then have that for custom reporting and for workflows inside of Marketo. Um, that's going to allow me to, to really leverage more of the integration uh, where I never could have in the past. So getting that custom data into Marketo from CRM, from a SQL database, from any other system is going to give me a lot more power than I've had in the past. So let's jump into the product. Um, Scribe Online, uh, online interface, really simple to use. A couple quick things about this, so you'll see some of the UI as we go through it. One of the big things, like Lynn mentioned, is the support of that kind of non-IFD deployment. So if I have on-premise data, I want to be able to connect to it via my ScribeOnline interface. So we've got the concept of agents, which can either be hosted in the cloud. So if I have a CRM Online and Marketo interface, I could completely run this um, independent of anything behind my firewall. Or I can install an on-premise agent. It's really small. It's about a two-minute wizard to walk through. But it gives me access to all my local databases, so text files, Oracle, SQL, MySQL, Dynamics CRM, 
anything that lives on premise, I can now expose to my Marketo integration without having to get IT involved to poke holes in the firewall. Uh, it rests behind your your firewall. So it's very IT friendly and it makes it a lot easier to, to get that, you know, that kind of approval going forward. So what we have in here is we've got a mapping technology which allows me to have a series of predefined maps between these systems. So I look at leaves going down to CRM. Um, it's an easy drag and drop interface, kind of simple to read through. So, you know, grab a lead, look up a contact. If the contact's not there, look up a lead, create a lead, update a lead, or update a contact. I can kind of read it top down and, and figure out what this is doing. I also have the ability to drop in comment blocks, group blocks. I can document this thing as I go. So I can hand this off to my next user, and they stand a chance of figuring out what I'm doing here. What I also can do is within this interface, I can look at my query and say, okay, what I want to do is I want to pull in related data. So I want to pull in policies that associate with this lead from Marketo. So I can do joins, I can do filtering to pull back that specific list of leads. Um, I can then map that data across. So within Dynamics CRM, within all these, these different interfaces, we bring back as much data as possible. So standard entities, uh, custom entities, Anything that exists within that Dynamics CRM interface, we're going to bring back and allow you to map to. And the mapping utility is really simple. So it's got a very simple kind of drag and drop interface where I have data on the left. I'll move that over to data on the right. Drag it, drop it, and I'm good to go. So I can expose this to you know a Marketo um, power user. This should be right up your alley because Marketo, I've done enough with now to know it's got a ton of power. It's got a lot of, of um, capability. Similar to this, where it's got a lot of capability, but it's giving you a nice kind of easy interface to work through. So a couple of the cool things about this, um, as I create these mappings, it exposes standard objects, custom objects, standard fields, custom fields. So custom fields in Marketo, I can take a look at, and I can see I've got things like Brendan Newsletter, obviously not a standard field. Um, this is going to bring it back and allow me to map data into it or from it. And I can create new maps at the same time. So I don't have to stick with just what's predefined. I can create new maps, new mapping between these systems. I can add in connections to other systems. So when I move this policy over to Marketo, I might want to first pass it through something like my ERP system. Find out, does that policy have a contract active against it? So I can have multiple systems in play too. So I can really build this integration to be as simple as, as just moving leads back and forth or get as complex as doing some data um, data validation, bringing multiple systems into the in, into the mix. So a lot of power from the scribe side. Um, I could schedule these integrations to run. This one I've got running every minute, um, I have every five minutes, every hour, every day, every week, every month. I can also do a real time sync of data. That means that I can use the Marketo webhooks. So if I look inside of Marketo, what I've built is a couple of really simple. Um, integrations here. So I've got a lead enrichment service through inside view. Basically, I've built some, some smart lists to say, you know, whenever this fill, form is filled out, aptly named lead enrich, I want to do a couple things. I'm going to first call out to a webhook, which is going to call out to a scribe integration. This is going to allow me to have a real time sync of data. I'm then going to have an interesting moment, and then I'm going to add them to a specific list. And because I'm doing it based on that, that trigger, it's going to be, um, obviously triggered. So it's not going to be on a polling interval. It's going to you know, happen real time. So what's that mean to my integration? What's it mean to everything I'm doing here? Well, let's, let's go ahead and show you. So inside of Marketo, to show I have nothing up my sleeves because you guys can't see they're rolled up, I'm going to go ahead and just show you the, the last lead I've gotten here. So it's going to be um, Mark Walker. On that lead form, I'm going to put in Lynn's email address. So lharrington, scrapstuff.com and submit that. Obviously, this is going to create a new lead within um, Marketo. What it's also going to do is going to call it to that webhook. So I'm going to be able to see as that, that kind of integration fires that I've got Lynn is here with not a lot of data about her. But as soon as it calls out to scribe, I'm going to start to see this data get filled in. This means that it's going to happen you know, near real time. It's going to allow any kind of follow-up email activity to have a lot more personalization about that. And when it gets sent to CRM, it's going to have all that good data. So it really has given me <clears throat> a lot of capability to add some customization to, to Marketo 
without having to write any code. So here you can see I've got Lynn, here's their address, here's all the information about that company. And when I look at Dynamic CRM, and because she's a brand new lead, she's going to come in as a lead, I'm going to find that Lynn's got all that same information is going to come across within here. So what that gives me is the ability to really have this integration um, fine-tuned. I could add customizations on top of it. I am allowing this integration to, to fit my needs versus having my needs fit the integration. So it does give me the ability to kind of customize and change this. Uh, because it's a webhook, I could add that in anywhere. So if I come back inside of uh, Marketo and look at webhooks, you know, you can see I've got a series of different ones. Inside view, lead enrichment, syncing data to CRM, um, address correction using Melissa data. So I can now leverage Scribe to kind of be my development platform to add a lot more power on the back end of Marketo uh, without having to write a whole bunch of actual code. You know, it's very simple JSON. We've got a bunch of, of tutorials and podcasts around how to do this. Uh, but it enables us to have a real-time sync of data between you know, Marketo, CRM, or whatever else you, you are integrating with. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and kick it back over to Lynn. Take us home. Thank you, Brendan. Okay. So just to highlight the four um, key benefits for a Marketo customer. The first is around that flexibility. Um, certainly you just saw that with what Brendan showed you. Um, really the flexibility to support um, your marketing programs, your CRM implementation, your organization's needs. Um, the, the second area is around ease of use. I think you probably saw today that this is really something that a marketing technologist or a Marketo power user uh, could use. Does not need to be a developer, therefore you're not reliant on IT or maybe an outside firm um, that is a developer. The third area is around connectivity. Um, customer data, again, lives in a lot more than just CRM systems. So um, step back and really think about the uh, data that would best profile uh, your prospects and customers, the data that would best allow you to segment and to target. Um, what are the various sources that that data could come from? How could you use Scribe to really connect um, to those sources? And the fourth is just the general area of innovation. Uh, this is the business that we're in, so all day long every day we're continuing to build out the platform uh, so that the functionality that you have um, that Brendan just showed will continue to improve. Um, and then we also offer lots of connectivity. So um, just to take a moment here, these are the, the sources of connectivity that we have today. We add to this on a monthly basis. In addition to the um, application connectivity, we have lots of what we call technology connectors. So um, you can oftentimes connect and share data with um, applications or data sources through one of a, our, our standard technology connectors, which really just supports a standard method of connectivity. And again, this list grows on a monthly basis, so um, it really opens up the door um, for lots of um, sources um, and ways for you to really bring uh, important data together. So we're going to open up to Q&A. Just a reminder again that there is um, someone monitoring the chat, so feel free to submit questions. We'll answer those questions um, via the chat um, or through email. Just a few next steps in addition to the resources files. Feel free to access uh, these links uh, as you're doing your evaluation to gain more information. And uh, we thank you for your time today.